my nine to five corporate job to full-time artist transition was not easy i think the most difficult part was the mindset part even more difficult than the financial part that's why now i want to talk to you about how this mindset change helped me a lot through this transition while i'm painting this beautiful flamingo with watercolor so first a little bit about me i worked in educational sector for 11 years by the time my school closed in 2020 due to pandemic i was the school director of a language school i was making something around the range of three thousand to thirty five hundred dollars which wasn't much if you consider that i live in boston where the housing prices are like over the roof although i like the fact that i was helping students and i was helping the education system in overall there was something missing i was very limited in terms of using my creativity and i was working very hard uh, when i come home i was so exhausted no energy to create anything and i always question who am i working for i am here trying to make the ends meet and not really happy about my job or my let's say development i always always wanted to do my own job i wanted to start a business by the pandemic hit i think i had been thinking about this for at least three to four years so finally when the pandemic hit i started in june 2020 Ejigular art because for the first time in years i was able to stop and think i was like okay i don't have to run like a hamster in the wheel I can just stop and think for once what I want in life and what makes me happy. So even though I had worries or I had some anxiety, I started my own job and I, the first step of it was to create my YouTube channel. After I created my YouTube channel, there were some questions like, do you do private lessons? Can we get some Zoom lessons? But in a very short amount of time, I was not able to meet the demand. So I created my online tutorials, full-time tutorials on Patreon. So I have students now on Patreon who watch my pre-recorded, fully narrated real-time tutorials. And then I launched my colored pencil course, which was again fully online. I wrote a book and finally now I'm doing artist coaching in which I help artists to build their online business. Now in my life, I'm at a place that I can solely rely on my income from art, which is like a dream come true. And I just want to do the same to the other artists who are interested in turning their hobby into their business or artists who are struggling to make sales or grow their business online. This is why I started Jumpstart Academy. So in Jumpstart Artist Academy, I start with mindset what does mindset mean and why is that so important please please don't go anywhere i know some people think that oh again the mindset bullshit but it's not it is really really important because it changed my life and if i took the leap and came here and i'm at this point right now in my life it's just because i made those changes and i really really want you to try as well the journey was not easy i had some thoughts that were stopping me from going further building my business there was so much anxiety and so many worries at the same time there were some external sounds like people's opinions versus my own worries it was it was tough times guys but at the same time i realized i was self-sabotaging myself i mean part of me wanted to move forward um, you know start my business and make money from what I love and the other part of me was saying like you don't know what's coming don't get out of your comfort zone you don't need this you can continue your nine to five job and just like be safe and this caused me to take no action for a very long time finally oh, finally <laughs> when I decided like wait a minute 
I decided that no way, Jose, I'm just taking this leap. I'm just going to do what I dreamed of for maybe years, maybe since my childhood, actually. This is the time. This is my moment. I'm going to do it. And I list down all the thoughts, negative thoughts that was going through in my mind. And then while I was doing coaching, I realized that my clients were going through the same problems and they were complaining about the same thought processes. So here we go. These are the thoughts that you need to be stay away from and how you can do that. So the first one is I'm not good enough. Well, I started drawing professionally in 2017, but professional mean I started making money from it. I was doing portraits mostly and I learned everything from online. So I thought that there are so many people other than me who are really, really good. Why would someone go to me instead of going to this better person? And I was thinking that, oh, I'm going to start my course when I became this level. But I don't know how to reach that level yet <laughs> because it was like I wanted to be a Da Vinci or something, which is not going to happen. <laughs> so I thought that like, OK, there is no way that I'm going to become good enough so that means i will never launch my courses just like this is ridiculous there's always someone who's going to be better than you always like the fact that there will be always someone who is lower level than you who will need your help who will learn from you so this realization started a new chapter in my life so the so same process this same negative process also kind of bothered me when i was starting my youtube channel i was like there are so many youtube channels out there like on drawing and painting like why would they watch me i mean i'm different you might do the same stuff but you have a different style you have a different perspective so people will come to you for different reasons also the same goes for artist coaching there are so many artist coaches out there but i really care about my clients and i build a very strong relationship and i'm very organized you know and i make them feel like they can really do this i'm very motivational so when i think about all these things i realize that i'm different and i can do this the second negative thought that really bothers us is what if i fail so this is a real fear this is a real feeling guys and it visits us more than a once maybe a day so if you don't want to feel like a failure then you have to redefine what failure means to you as well as what success means to you when are you going to feel successful when is it really failure for you and is that really a failure or you are seeing it as a failure there is a difference between failing and falling because we fall a lot on our journey but then we get up we just you know heal our wounds and we continue running so maybe you're confusing falling with failing another reason why we are so afraid of failure is also the criticism we are just afraid of criticism we don't know how to handle it it's just because inside we don't love ourselves as much as we should if you love yourself if you believe in yourself and what you do then no one's words can break you no one's words really should matter and i learned this very late in my life i'm 39 now and i learned it like last year <laughs> so you should not let anyone get under your skin believe in yourself love yourself and just continue another negative thought that i had while i was building my business is i am a self-taught artist i didn't go to school for this again am i enough yes it's gonna be like a little bit of repeating myself but going to school doesn't make you good enough actually it's the opposite if you ask me you learn all these techniques by yourself by trial and error with great patience it even makes you a little bit better don't you think <laughs> you taught everything to yourself and you became that good bravo Good job i would say of course if you can go to school go to school if you can learn the techniques there that's great but in order to be great artists you don't have to be an art school graduate 
Honestly, art schools are really expensive in the United States. I don't know in other countries. When you graduate, there is no guarantee that you will have a stable income. This is the thing. They teach you art in art school, but they don't teach you business. This is why I try to help artists with my artist coaching program. By the way, many famous artists are self-taught, but somehow in some part of their lives, they force themselves to get some training from like professional or master artists. So you will find yourself that, okay, you're drawing well and you wanna improve. So definitely you should seek for some training that you can get for, from someone who is better than you, more professional than you. Let's talk about another one. Artists cannot get paid big bucks unless they are famous. This is not true. You need to know your client profile really, really well, and you also need to know how to reach them. We need to increase our visibility. In today's world, this is possible with social media. And I want to ask you, what are you doing to increase your visibility? This is why I think it is hugely important to know how to use social platforms and which one to choose. As I said before, in school, they teach us art, but they don't teach us business. What is your sales and marketing strategy? How are you going to nurture your lead? How are you gonna get your leads? And how are you going to know that your lead generation is going to work tomorrow or next year? Do you wanna scale your business? And how are you gonna do that as an artist? Because your art business is technically you. What happens to your business if something happens to you? You know, these kind of things we never think about and we need to if we really think about making money or if you're thinking about having a full income from our art. This is what I did. This was the first thing that I did, having a business plan for a regular art. And it's been working. And I teach the same to my clients. We keep hearing artists are poor, they're not gonna get rich at all. And the reason we believe in that is because maybe we are afraid of being rich. <laughs> I know, you heard it right. You're gonna say like, whoa, 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 AJ, you know, are you kidding me? Of course we wanna be rich. Of course we want to make some money. But even though when you hear the word rich or we wanna be rich, if it's bothering you right now, if you're thinking that, oh, she's all about money or like being rich is associated with something bad in your mind, then even the word rich is going to bother you. The reason is because once we become rich, once we start to make money, once we start making six figures, seven figures, then we will think that our friends or family will not like us anymore because we don't conform. This might be the truth, this might not be, I don't know your family or friends, but if you're successful and if you are happy, I think your friends and family needs to support that. If they are not, maybe they shouldn't be in your life in the first place. And there is another one that you're gonna be surprised. You might be afraid of being too successful. For example, when I sent out the email about launching my coaching business, I got 49 applications. I was like, something inside me say like, maybe while you can, now you should stop doing this because that's so many people. I remember feeling so overwhelmed because I was like, so many people believe in me and what if I fail them? And the anxious AJ creeps in and she says like, hey, I know you don't wanna fail, so why don't you stop doing it in the first place? Don't do it. If you don't do it, then you're not gonna fail ever. <laughs> but of course I said, no, this is what I had been dreaming for and I'm gonna do this. So that kind of step that I took took me here where I am right now, right now in front of you today. More success increases your chances of failure. And the higher you climb up the stairs, the more painful the fall is. But if you never get out of that comfort zone, if you never take the chance, then you will never get to that 1% who succeeded launching their own business. And finally, this is the last thing that I want to talk about. Among my clients, I see this trend that, oh, I want to do a little bit of oil painting. Now I'm going to do a little bit of acrylic and I'm going to work on charcoal drawing a little bit more. 
So when I asked them to niche down, they're like, why? I don't know what I want yet. I want to do this, I want to do that. I'm not ready to niche down. If you ask me, this is um, a way of running from responsibility. And once you let the fear take the control, then it becomes like, oh, if I try acrylic a little bit, if I try oil painting just a little bit, just enough so that I understand the medium and I get comfortable with it, once I get to the level that I become advanced, I stop. Because if I get advanced, then I become responsible for it because I have to prove myself, because I have to be successful in it. And people will know me with that. So why don't I prevent that by just skipping the mediums and trying to learn new things all the time? This is my theory. I don't know if it's true or not, but this is what I see in my clients and I really kind of <laughs> force them down to, to find a niche. But we end up you know, being successful, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm proud of that, I'm proud of my clients. Besides these thoughts that are preventing you from launching your own art business or growing it, that are also other things that affect your art. If your art is not improving as fast as you think it should be, then maybe you should watch this video as well so you can find solutions yourself and start improving today.